Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and we finally received our first snow in western Pennsylvania. So I'm excited to be out here exploring the fungal diversity. And I want to talk about this one really briefly with you because there's something fascinating about it, and I bet you'd be interested to learn what that is. So real quickly, I'll go over the identification and its name. This is Ischnoderma resinosum, the resinous polypore, a very common mushroom found this time of year in eastern North America. This one's found on wood. They call it Ischnoderma, Ischnos for dry or withered, derma for skin and right now it's kind of dry and withered and resinosum for resinous and that's why they call it the resinous polypore because it exudes these little droplets that are brownish or tannish especially when young but you will see it lining the cap surface even on the underside even when it's older but typically I find them on the mushroom whenever it's younger. So this is a polypore mushroom on the underside there are many many pores and it's got a white pore surface that'll bruise brown it'll turn brownish whenever it's older and this one deposits a white spore print. Whenever this mushroom's younger, it's very soft and dough-like in texture and consistency. This is not like many other polypores out there. Most of them are very, very hard. This one does get harder whenever it's older. But like I said, you'll find this later in the year, September, October, November, December. It'll overwinter, but it will be dried up, and you'll usually find a lot of them on wood, conifer wood or deciduous wood. So what's so special about this fungus right here? Well, the resinous polypore has been shown to be an effective bioremediator and degrader of organopollutants in our environment. Specifically, I'm referring to synthetic dyes. So worldwide, there are over 10,000 synthetic dyes in the market being used in various industries, like the paper industry, the food industry, the cosmetic industry, the pharmaceutical industry, but perhaps the biggest user and maybe abuser of these synthetic dyes would be the textile industry. So after agriculture, believe it or not, the textile industry is actually the biggest polluter of clean water. Think about the synthetic dyes and how they're created and designed. They are designed to be resistant to degradation by heat, by light, by various oxidizing agents. So they end up in the water through the effluent wastewater in the textile industries. And these compounds are not inert, far from it. They might want you to think they're inert, but they're not. And so they negatively affect microorganisms, the plants, the animals, even human beings as well. The research is pretty conclusive on the impacts of synthetic dyes on the health of living organisms. These synthetic dyes have been tied to bladder cancer, to adrenal tumors, to kidney tumors, to brain gliomas and other pretty serious conditions. So synthetic dyes in our environment presents a pretty serious pollution problem, one that's not very easy to be dealt with, and it's one that's not just swept under the rug, but swept into our clean water. So how do mushrooms play into all this? Well, the resinous polypore, Ischnoderma resinosum, has been shown to be an effective degrader of organopollutants because of its role in degrading polymers. And it's degrading this wood right here. So Ischnoderma resinosum helps to break down the lignin in wood. And how mushrooms do this, not just Ischnoderma resinosum, but they secrete enzymes, extracellular enzymes like lactase, like lignin peroxidase, like manganese peroxidase. And these enzymes can depolymerize and mineralize lignin into carbon dioxide and water. And these enzymes have very broad substrate specificity. So they can not only act on lignin, but they can act on other compounds that are chemically or structurally similar to lignin, like organopollutants. So the structure of lignin looks somewhat similar to the structure found in synthetic dyes. So these enzymes are able to get in there and essentially depolymerize, oxidize, and break down these organopollutants. What's interesting is that Whenever traditional measures are used in the waterway to clean up these effluents, like physical means, chemical means, bacterial means, oftentimes these degradation products, these byproducts, are actually more toxic than the original starting products. Whenever we look at mushrooms like Ischnoderma resinosum, we see that it's almost the opposite, that the byproducts are actually non-toxic altogether. Now, Ischnoderma resinosum isn't the only mushroom that has been well studied for its role in biodegrading synthetic dyes. In fact, research has been ongoing for a couple decades. Perhaps the model organism in this subject area would be Phanerochete chrysosporium, which is a crust fungus. Tremetes versicolor is also very effective, the turkey tail mushroom. The common oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus, all of these have been shown to biodegrade polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PCBs, explosives, synthetic dyes as well. New research, however, suggests that this one, Ischnoderma resinosa, might actually outperform those other species when it comes to the decolorization of dyes. So this research is very exciting. It'll be pretty interesting to see where this takes us many years from now. Now, I'm not condoning any of this. I'm not saying, yeah, please continue to pollute our waterways, continue to introduce these cancerous conditions into the lives of various living organisms. 
because mushrooms can clean up your dirty mess. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, it'd probably be better if we just reduce our dependency worldwide on these dangerous compounds and instead look towards safer, more natural alternatives. However, let's look at the current reality. And the current reality is that whenever greed is mixed with ignorance, mixed with lack of nature connection, this is the result. Polluted land, polluted water, ill health, and disease. However, let's be assured that we can look toward members of the fungal kingdom in times of need. And perhaps this is one of those times of need. We can look to members of the fungal kingdom for help, for guidance, and for assistance. Perhaps that's why the fungal kingdom is there. This is Ischnoderma resinosum, the resinous polypore, a fascinating fungus whose existence is absolutely essential to the health of the planet, to the health of you and me.